My name is Alan Frias and I am from San Francisco and I have a dance company called Mind Over Matter. I have a youth company called Young Minds. Um, I'm currently working with the Golden State Warriors, which is really nice, and I'm teaching here at Dance Mission. We're at right now on location. This is my spot. You can always find me right here. <laughs> this is my spot. Okay. And, um, I teach over at Union City at another uh, competition studio. So I'm um, pretty busy. And when I'm not dancing, I'm actually been able to host um, some competitions and stuff, and uh, like Prelude and uh, Greg Tactus uh, for collaboration. Oh my God, that was so fun. I love it. Call me, nigga. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I am a pretty busy man. So I started actually dancing more when I got into high school. And it was a, with a group of friends from, um, from back in high school, and we started a group called Around the Way Boys. There was just three of us. And so we started doing little shows here and there. Then he asked me to choreograph for another group called Cutting Edge at the time. It was an all Filipino group, straight up. That's all I was dancing with, just my other half. We were all Filipino. People would be like, do you have to be Filipino to be in your group? Dude, it just happened to be like that. I walked into the situation. So, you know, being half black and half Filipino, damn, it's hella loud. Can y'all just chill? We in the mission, so it do go dumb in here. Um, it's cool right now, though. Uh, but, so they actually joined Cutting Edge and Choreograph uh, for this group that only got together during the summer. And we did Fiesta um, Filipina. Well, it was Fiesta Islands back in the day. And then it changed to Fiesta Filipina and then something else. I got lost. Translation. Pistahan. Yes, Pistahan. Man, that's what it is now, right? Okay, so yeah, it's been a, it's been through some changes. So we used to always do that every year at the Civic Center. And then from that group, we took all the good people <laughs> and we made Mind Over Matter. Uh, and that was like actually everyone who we all went to high school with because majority of everyone came from ROTC. So they have that, little, that discipline, you know, of like being together and being serious about what we're going to do. So we, from that group, it's still here. <laughs> and now I've got young minds. Um, I started to dance, I started to get paid for dancing um, when I started teaching here at this studio. This is the first place I ever taught, Dance Mission. And it was after a show that Mind Over Matter had did. And so the owners here at that time were like, oh, we'd love for you to come teach here. So I was like, hmm, okay. You know, I had never taught um, before, well, except for my group, but I never thought I could get paid for it. Now, that was kind of a far fetch because at the time I was actually working at UCSF also in the uh, temporary employment pool, you know, doing temp job, bullshit here and there, woom woom. But always busy, always hard worker. Um, and then um, I started teaching here and I just kind of, the first year it was really bad. I had 10 students the whole year for one class. And then later on, it kind of got, you know, it took me a long time to learn how to teach because no one taught me. I had never been to another class before. Um, actually, my first class I ever went to was Culture Shock, San Francisco. Because, oh, at that time, the class I took, it was Micaiah. And Micaiah came and taught. And um, Culture Shock San Francisco was actually rehearsing at the Bay Club down here. And I actually auditioned for them. Then I found out they were sponsored by Nike at the time. Oh my God, we were getting free clothes from Nike all the time. Suited out, fresh for shows. Oh my God, those were the days. And so I joined them and I still had um, Mind Over Matter going and I was teaching and then I started to go to school. And I'm working, it's crazy, for like three years just um, running two groups and doing all this. But what happened was, in the mix of all this craziness, my grandmother got sick and she had a triple bypass. So we needed someone around the clock to be with her when she got out of the hospital. So my, um, my auntie said, well, why don't I take care of her during the, um, at night and then you take care of her during the day. So I quit my day job and just relied on hoping and praying that my dancing would come through and be stable for me. And I've been so blessed and fortunate that it has. Um, 
and then just from here, like, this place right here has just opened up to meeting so many people from Japan, from France, people who come over here from different countries say, oh, I heard about your class, you know, when I come to here, I'm like, what? How you hear about me, child? Ooh, the net is the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love YouTube, right? Um, so I've been so from here. This is how I actually got my job with the Warriors because this girl from Japan came over here to audition. Came to my class. She got, she got in, and she got in with the coach and said, "Oh, you know, the coach really needs help. I'm gonna talk to them about you, child." She talked to the coach. Talked to uh, talked to the coach about me. She came here two days later looking for me, and. Thank you, Shelby Alexander. That's the woman that's got me started at the Warriors. Oh my God, I love it. It feels like family there too. I need my money pronto. Get it in the morning like Alonzo. Rondo, green got cheese like a nacho. Feeling on no ass, bitch, wear a poncho. Nothing, 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 nothing. See, when I first started dancing, um, every group was different from each other. Um, a different style, a different presentation. There was, from San Jose, Danger's Image. Um, and then there was Danger Zone. Oh shit. Danger's Image was the boys. Danger Zone were the girls. More correct. Boom. Maybe I should do my redone. No, 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 I was right. Um, there were the all girls fusion, there was universal movements. Um, we had Corey's group over in Oakland. Oh, there was the Filipino Entertainments Club. Um, they were from over in Daly City. And damn, there was like a hundred of them, I think. But I think maybe like only 50 of them performed at a time. That was the first time I ever saw like a large ass group, all everyone just performing at once. But what's changed is like, it seems like everybody tries to look the same. Like when I go and judge these competitions, I'm sitting there like, when is it over? Oh my God. Everyone's using the same damn song, same verse. I feel like the radio is on. No one strives to really entertain and surprise anyone anymore. There are a few now, let me just say, Greg Chapkiss and them, they really put on a freaking show. Um, Academy of Villains, they put on a bomb ass show. Um, oh, you know how another group who I really like though? Um, is actually The Company. And I think they bring um, a different style to that, you know, that LA also type of feel. And like, they bring it really well up here, mixed with the how they do little ghetto shit in the bay, like, it's really clever. <laughs> They're like a clever group, you know what I'm saying? Everyone should just like really just look at the rest of these groups and kind of take from that and really build their own, have their own identity. I just think that, I just really think that there's some people, more people around here need to kind of do their um, research on, on the history of some shit around here. Cause motherfuckers just be, let me, I don't understand this. I don't understand how sometimes people be dancing so damn fast to a song and it'd be hella slow, but it'd be like, woo, 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 woo. what the fuck is you doing? Why are you fighting flies, motherfucker? It's like, how many moves can you fit in the eight count? Oh, I got you by two. You know what I'm saying? Slow down, chill for a minute. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Can we just please come together and slow down? Um, <laughs> oh my God, I'm talking shit. <laughs> oh, I'm so talking your fuck. That's my opinion. Shit. Yeah. Um, that is my motherfucking opinion. Because my mouth is blunt and I actually say what I feel. And some people can't handle that in class. But see, when I'm teaching in adult class, I want to talk adult so that you understand my movements. Because my movements are sexual sometimes. And so I feel like. Dancers are really sexual people. If you can really dance, like, you know, it's on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ooh, wait a minute. Only if you groan. <sighs> okay, now. Alan. But I like how when the kids, no matter what, where they're training, 
you can tell that they're training hard. But can we just train right? I don't know if it's because I, when, when I hear stuff, I just, I hear, when I choreograph, I choreograph a little bit more soulful, I guess like a little bit more groove. This woman like takes my class, and she's taking classes all around the Bay, and she's doing her little blog on it. And she said, Alan's class is not beginner by, by far. And she said that it, it's kind of hard, but once you get into the groove, you're good. And when I look at my shit, I'll be like, my shit is not really hard when I, when I look at it. Not compared to some of the technical ass shit that I see out here. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it should just feel good to the body. And that's what another one, what another one of my dancers said. She said, to do Alan's style, you have to really know your body. I wish there were actually just more shows than competitions around here. You know, where it just kind of brings everyone together with no stress and you can kind of get to know everybody, you know, and really just perform and not have to worry about, oh my God, I gotta hit that last part right quick or else I'm ass out, <laughs> you know? You just wanna, I just want some shows that we can just really just chill and just, oh, it's time to go on, all right, let's go, and just have fun. That's not there anymore. Um, there used to be, back in the day, there were a lot of shows that were going on that there was always somewhere that it was like, I remember there's one show called Big Top and that shit was in San Jose, literally under like a fucking carnival, Big Top tent. Yes, and it was pouring down, raining, water coming under the tents, niggas. We had them all white in the mud. We got up there and jacked it out and we all still had a good time afterwards with everybody. Everything felt a lot more family. Everyone's segregated now. You know what I'm saying? You don't really know someone until after they leave a group. You know what I'm saying? People just don't know how to interact and just come together and I just feel like that's what we need. I personally don't know what to do to make that happen, but that's what's really missing from back then, you know, because back then we did know, even when you went to groups and you went to shows back in the day, and of course you want to be on your game, you know what I'm saying, like, huh, you know, we got to do that shit, but it was never nothing like, hey, you know, oh my God, let's, you know, boom, boom, No, not too much anymore. You don't see that. Even when groups come from down south and they come up here and perform i feel like we're not even as friendly as we used to so I, well, i'm just used to be like hey talking to everybody but back in the day like i felt like we were more welcoming and i, I see these groups come up from la and stuff but i don't see no interaction with them but maybe it's because it's competition you can and you gotta but damn we're missing a lot of good people coming through you never know If you've been doing the same style forever in a day, like, and you got it, and you're still there uh, three, four years later, still doing that same style, not being challenged, what are you getting out of it? If you wanna dance, shouldn't you just go out there and just train with all the people you possibly can? You know what I'm saying? Isn't that how you should wanna better yourself? Um, I tell that to my dancers too, hey, when you feel like, you know, okay, I've come to my plateau with Alan Frank Frias, I bless you to go and learn from whoever it is that you feel that your heart just like, ooh, I feel it when I dance with them. Because that's what I core up, like, I really core up, like, I really feel it and I want them to feel it too. I'll sing it in my head and I'll sing it in the shower and I'll sing it here in the hallway while I'm dancing before everybody come in and someone will be like, ooh, Alan, I hear you laugh. I hear you sing. You ain't saying the words, but you do, 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 do. Yes, because I want them to feel that in class. I sing it like that. So, why stick around somewhere and just be doing the same oh one two one two one two and that's not all what dance is whether it be you want to go and work on your turns and take some jazz and stuff i think you should do that don't let anyone just like say no you can't go do that and you just need to be here i think that's some bullshit. oh when i'm judging competitions i'm really looking for <laughs> the first thing is actually the mix the mix. Let me touch on that right quick. Yes. Okay. Let's touch on the people and these mixes that the, they be putting together. Child, 
Your mix has to flow from beginning to end. It has to flow like a damn stream, okay? Just nice and smooth and groove. You know what I'm saying? Now, sometimes these mixes be taking me on a fucking roller coaster. It goes, start off slow, woo, and then go boom, and then go woo, and then go boom. Bitch, I'm not at Great America riding no damn swing and ride. <laughs> Y'all need to work on your mixes. It's really got to flow. It's like if you can't really put it in your car and have someone listen to it and dance to it, bitch, fix it. Because it should really ride. You should Any mix you put in there, no matter what theme you're doing, it should be able to ride and the audience should be able to follow. You know, you got to take them on a good journey, not like a bad ass um, fucking Rambo movie. You know, those are fucking awful. Um, that's the first thing. These mixes, it, it'll throw me off if, if it's not right. Because I'll be like, oh, they're cool. All of a sudden, oh, God, what the hell? Um, but also look for their musicality. If they're really um, keeping my eye while the music is really going. Cause you know, sometimes it's, it's um, if they're creating like, you know, a nice picture, if it's really just going with the music. Sometimes these people, that's what I hate when people do ghetto ass routines and they be smiling. Bitch, we ain't smiled in the ghetto since when? What the fuck are you cheesing about? Yeah. People. No, you do not smile during the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Get your rats to your gum. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> damn. I mean, do y'all really know why they do that? This little ratchet move is because when girls got braids in them and they tight, they pat their head. It's just not a dance move, FYI. They got braids and shit's tight. Oh, um... Another thing, <laughs> that was a hot thing. But I don't get that, like, I remember back in the day when all the dancers actually had dance names to them. No, not every, not no more, because it's too many damn moves. We can't name every dance move, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, you know, um, that's the heart attack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, oh gosh. Um, why I just put that out there? Oh, because we were talking about what I'd be looking for. See, now you just have to chop that shit up. Okay. Um, other shit that I look for. Um, I'm not too concerned about all about like the levels and stuff and like, you know, oh, did they go down to the ground and, and really just get down there and do something? I don't give a fuck, <laughs> okay? Did you entertain me? Did I feel like I want to dance with you? That's how I want to feel. Keep it real. You know, um, sometimes it's just me putting out this, I don't know, it's like weird ass fake looking choreography to like music that's great, but it just doesn't match. Like, bitch, you had hella time. Did you think about that? Did you get another one, someone else's opinion? Oh, probably not, because that shit's <laughs> fucked up. Choreographers of groups, it does not matter how many people you have on stage. Just do a strong performance. Um, and just make sure it really goes with the music. But you gotta do the music first. You have to do the music first. Cause the music is going to go ahead and tell the story. You know what I'm saying? You can't, I hate it when choreographers put this there and this there and then put it together. And then, oh, next performance, they make some shit around, put some new shit in. And it's even more fucked up than the last time. <laughs> Just low. Stay consistent. Work on the mix first. Then put your um, choreography together. But make sure that the music goes. Yeah, you know, put that music together first. You know, and then put the choreography in there. And see, listen to it a few times and say, oh, I see this and this here. Oh, maybe someone so can choreograph this part. You know what I'm saying? So that it's not a lot on you too. Um, unless you want it to be a lot, that's cool. Get up from the East Coast, Philly, I was brought up. Now I'm in the dirty South, ATL, job. I just left the studio, I think I got a heater. Watch out for the 808, it could brush a tweeter. I show they trying to... I want to say that I appreciate everyone that has come um, in and out of my life. And whether you're out of my life right now, you're really always in my life. Uh, 
and everyone that I've worked with, you guys have all been very inspirational to me. And I just pray that everyone has um, a really good journey and maybe all cross paths again. And um, deuce, deuce. <laughs>